Science Journal for Kids and Teens presents How Can Black Rats Change the Behavior of Reef Fish? Adapted from the original peer-reviewed paper in the journal Nature, Ecology, and Evolution, published on January 5, 2023. Research conducted by Rachel Gunn and others from the Lancaster Environment Center at Lancaster University in the UK. See the accompanying PDF for additional authors and their affiliations. Read by Miranda Wilson. Abstract. Every animal needs an environment where it can survive and thrive. Unfortunately, humans are having a serious impact on the natural world. Our behavior can harm ecosystems and the animals that call them home. In the 1700s, black rats arrived with humans on tropical islands in the middle of the Indian Ocean. Seabirds play an important role in providing nutrients to coral reefs around these islands, but the invasive rats feed on the seabirds and thus reduce their population. So, the amount of nutrients reaching the coral reefs also decreases. Coral reef fish need lots of energy from their food to be aggressive and defend their homes from intruders. We thought there might be a connection between black rats, the nutrients available on coral reefs, and the behavior of small reef fishes. Indeed, we discovered that invasive rats on land directly affect the behavior of fish in the sea. Introduction. Coral reefs are very busy, important places. Coral reefs cover less than 1% of the ocean floor, but they support up to one third of all marine species. Farming damselfish are herbivores. They live in small territories containing their food source, algae. The farming damselfish take care of their small patch of algae in a similar way that we would take care of a vegetable patch. Farming damselfish are also very aggressive. The more they chase away intruders, the more food they have for themselves. This then gives them more energy to keep on defending their food. Nutrients in the algae are boosted by an unlikely source. Seabird poop. Seabirds feed in the open ocean and then fly back to tropical islands to roost and breed. When the seabirds poop, they provide the island and neighboring coral reefs with an extra source of nutrients. Seabird poop therefore acts like a fertilizer for coral reefs. But some islands in the Indian Ocean have been invaded by black rats. The rats attack seabird nests to feed on small seabirds and seabird eggs. So the seabirds leave rat-infested islands, taking their nutritious poop with them. We wondered if farming damselfish near rat-free islands would have smaller, higher quality territories compared to damselfish near rat-infested islands. We also expected farming damselfish near rat-free islands to be more aggressive. This is because it is worth investing energy into defending a high quality territory. In the photo, you can see a farming damselfish defending its territory in the coral reef. The damselfish is black with a yellow tail and is swimming in the foreground of the photo. In the background is a coral reef. Methods. To record the aggression of farming damselfish, we set up cameras on coral reefs near tropical islands. We filmed 30 fish near rat-free islands and 30 fish near rat-infested islands. We recorded the number of times each fish chased away an intruder. We also measured the size of the territory each damselfish lived in. We also calculated the quantity of algae within each territory. We then took a sample of the algae from each territory to measure the quality of the algae. We calculated the quality by measuring the amount of a specific type of nitrogen that was in the sample. This nitrogen is present in seabird poop, which means we can measure the amount of nutrients in the algae that comes from seabird poop. Results we found that the quantity of algae within farming damselfish territories was the same near both rat-free and rat-infested islands, 
but the quality of the algae was higher for damselfish territories near rat-free islands with lots of seabirds. In other words, damselfish with algae fertilized by seabird poop get more for their money when they eat. But does this affect the behavior of the damselfish? Yes. Damselfish near rat-free islands have smaller territories. They are also more aggressive than damselfish near rat-infested islands. Damselfish near rat-infested islands have larger territories, but they chase fewer intruders out of their territories. These farming damselfish have to hold larger territories to get the same amount of nutrients as a damselfish eating the higher quality algae. In figure one, you can see the chain of events on rat-free islands versus islands taken over by invasive rats. On the left, you can see a rat-free island. It is frequented by seabirds which provide nutrients to coral reefs. At the bottom of the image, you can see that this results in higher quality algae, smaller territories, and more aggressive farming damselfish. On the right, you can see a rat-infested island. Here, rats feed on the seabirds, which means that there are no nutrients from seabirds for the coral reefs. At the bottom of the image, you can see that this results in lower quality algae, larger territories, and less aggressive farming damselfish. As rats infest a new island, what happens to the size of the territory a damselfish must protect? Discussion. This is the first evidence that invasive rats on land can affect marine fish behavior. Seabird nutrients make higher quality territories for farming damselfish. They are therefore much more valuable. Damselfish invest energy into chasing away intruders so they can keep their high quality algae. Invasive rats disrupt the seabird nutrient cycle. The territories of affected farming damselfish are therefore of a lower quality. It doesn't make sense to waste energy defending something that is of poor quality. This is why the damselfish near rat-infested islands were less aggressive. Territorial damselfish can also have a big impact on other reef fish species. Butterfly fish and surgeon fish avoid damselfish territories to avoid being attacked and chased away. Surgeon fish also travel in groups near damselfish territories. This is because there is safety in numbers. Territorial damselfish therefore play an important role in the interaction between different coral reef fish. When an animal takes over a habitat that was not meant for them, there can be substantial and surprising effects across many ecosystems. Conclusion. Our research shows that one invasive species has the power to change the behavior of a native species in an entirely different ecosystem. Often, invasive species enter an area because of humans. This might include ships carrying small organisms to new places, or setting your pet turtle free in a local pond. Sometimes it is an accident, and other times we do it on purpose. Either way, since we are part of the problem, we must also be part of the solution. Can you think of a time when you have discovered an unexpected species in an unusual place? Or has your local ecosystem been affected by an invasive species? Thank you for listening to this recording. Visit our website, sciencejournalforkids.org, for more free science teaching resources.